What does the word gutsy mean to you? Gutsy. Oh, well, for me, um, it taps. I'm going to have to take my metaphysical approach with this, but our guts represent our sacral chakra. Our sacral energy is our creative energy, um, our creator energy. And so when we are gutsy, we are in our creator mode. We are visioning, we are imagining, and we are building something beautiful and, and bold. You're listening to The Gutsy Podcast, where we talk about all things real, raw, and ridiculous about running a business authentically. Whether you need an inspirational pick-me-up or a swift kick in the mental ass, The Gutsy Podcast is your bi-weekly guide to getting out of your head and back into action. I'm Laura Ora, branding and mindset coach for female entrepreneurs, CEO of Works & Co., and your host on this journey through entrepreneurship. It's time to fuel your gutsy. Are you on a journey to discover and experience deeply fulfilling happiness, success, and expansion? This is all extremely possible when you're willing to get still, feel what you need to feel, and take action towards the things that you truly want versus the things that you feel like you should do or should be. Today, we're talking with Aaron Patton about metaphysics, the combination of energy and strategy to achieve success and fulfillment in your life and in your business. Aaron is a metaphysical master with an old soul and a youthful vision. From Houston to Harvard, she discovered that in order to experience fulfilled success, that she first needed intentional healing to truly manifest the life of her dreams while experiencing real joy. She now helps other business owners do the same through the Meta Business World, the only management consultancy that integrates ancient metaphysical principles with leading edge strategy, taking organizations and individuals to new levels of existence and experience. Before we get into this juiciness, I would absolutely love and appreciate if you could take a few minutes and go to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. If there is something that you have taken from the Gutsy Podcast, if it is making an impact in your life or in your business, raising your vibration, or just fucking helping you along the way. Reviews help other listeners just like you to not only discover the show, but have an impact in their life as well. I also read, love, and appreciate every single word that you leave. So I'll put a link in the show notes, but you can also just go to your app in Apple Podcasts, scroll down to leave a review, and leave some words of wisdom to let others know what they can expect. All right, my friend, this is a deep and transformative episode, so let's get into it. Erin, welcome to the Gutsy Podcast. Thank you so much, Miss Laura R., for having me. It's just such a pleasure to chat with you and share with you. So thank you again for having me. Absolutely. And I, you know, the tables have turned today because not too long ago, I had the honor of being on your podcast. Tell us a little bit about that. And I'll make sure that we link our episode in the show notes of this one as well. I would love to have you link it and, you know, share with your audience. But yeah, I, I mean, thoroughly enjoyed talking with Laura. Um, my podcast is the Meta Business Millennial. So we're really focused on the integration of our divine path, authentic path and business. And I don't know anyone else out here who is doing that like you. Um, you're really empowering not only others, but I mean, even me and your story and your hustle, and your determination, your drive, um, all with a, a groundedness and, and a soft heart, which is really rare to find these days. So I really appreciated that time chatting with you and, and talking with you. Thank you so much. What a joy. You know, it's, I love how when you, when you truly embrace who you are, it's like, yeah. it's, it throws up this beacon that then attracts other people that are doing the same thing mm -hmm. in, in a different corner of the world. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's one of the most powerful things. Not only are you evolving yourself, but now you're attracting the, like your people, right? Like, Period. Hey, like, Hey, we, we are all here doing this. Now let's do this collectively together. Yes. And I, and I love to call that like my soul family because, you know, I've had my ups and downs with my, my, my DNA blood family <laughs> and, you know, friends that I grew up with. And it's just all of those um, relationships and experiences serve their purpose, serve their time. And now is the time, first of all, for me to really know who the fuck I am. Mm -hmm. And then when I know that, 
then I can attract all the right people, the, the soul family, like I call it, that can really feed into me, that can support me, that can grow with me, expand with me, because that's really where I work, the season that I'm in. Absolutely. 10,000 times I support that all the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you've got quite an incredible story and journey from Harvard to healing mm -hmm. to now running an incredibly successful business. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about your journey and what has led you to where you are today. Yeah, that's a great question because it can go all the way back or it can start to yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I would like to say um, pretty um concretely that my whole life has been about following a passion and it's like I'm thinking like as far back as that kind of idea went for me I remember being like a Girl Scout and like having a t-shirt that said like blaze your own trail you know and that to me resonated very loudly with to me and also had like a beautiful horse and like all those things like for girls you know and that always was my ethos even when I was heavily programmed by, you know, doing, performing well in school and getting into sports and not talking to boys. And I was really kind of, I grew up in a very strict household and, mm. um, you know, there was also a lot of chaos around me as well. So it was nice to kind of have that balance. You know, when I was just six years old, my, my sister was murdered by her girlfriend and they got into a, it was a crime of passion. Um, a few months later, my dad got caught up in a prescription fraud in his doctor's office. He was a do medical doctor and he was sent to federal prison for seven years. And then in the midst of all that, my mom is literally losing her mind. You can imagine. And she's in a, essentially um, a, a mental hospital. And so at a very young age, I'm like, okay, this is my life. I'm have to raise my fucking self, you know? And not that I didn't have lots of guides and teachers and things like that, but there was always this knowingness in me that I needed to look out for me and also those around me <laughs> because not everyone was always capable of holding it together. And, and I find myself still in that position as a caregiver to my mom now who has dementia and, and my son and in my business as a healer. And, and yet, through that, all of that, I believe that one thing that was missing in, in that those younger years was that that fierce protection and that that undying love for myself. Mm. And that's essentially what I had to cultivate in that that's the healing, essentially, is that when we're a kid, we just have so much energy and so much love to give that there isn't really a sense of self yet. Um, it's just all about the external world around us until all of that energy runs out, which happens around about around the age 30. Like you can only you can only give so much energy before you're fully depleted. And that's essentially when I graduated from Harvard. And, you know, when I graduated from Harvard, it really was a wake up call that all that I had strived for, all that I had worked for, um, it really didn't mean shit. You know, I moved to a place, I moved to Detroit after Harvard, where like rarely anyone went to Harvard. On top of that, it was a very distressed and, um, you know, it was a coming back story. But people really weren't, you know, I mean, it's not like New York. It wasn't like, you know, it's all about the status and the symbol and the money. You know, there was a little bit of that. But at the end of the day, people were really just trying to survive and, and get to the next day. And that essentially is a, is the consciousness of most people on the planet. And so that's when I kind of had got hit hard by like, wow, I've been living in this wealth bubble for all this time. And it really is fake. Like it's just smoke and mirrors. And, um, and on top of that, my life was in shambles. Like I was in a, you know, an abusive relationship. I was not enjoying my job. I was, in, in, a, in the middle of renovating my house. So I never really had a comfortable home. Um, I, I lost my dad unexpectedly. My, you know, I, one of my friends, it was, it was like a full circle moment. One of my friends was murdered on a trip in Jamaica. And then a few oh months later, my mom attempted suicide. And so this is all happening just a couple years. I graduated in 2015. This all happened in 2017, 2018, just a couple years after I'm finishing school. Like I'm just barely figuring life out and I'm just getting hit with all of these life challenges. And so in the midst of that, in, in many ways that, that 
recycling of experiences that I had as a child, I'm actually having to confront the emotional aspect of it, which before I didn't really have to, because as children, our emotional development is just so different right at that time. But as an adult, with again, with all the programming, with all the stress, with all the you know, the facade issues, you know, there's a lot more to consider there. And I could feel it. And I didn't know what to do with that pain. So that's when I really turned to a spiritual path, a spiritual calling and and healing myself. And really, I started with a therapist, like I really started real basic. And I got into like a Reiki healer, then I got into my yoga practice. I ended up studying at the University of Commission Sciences with Dr. Phil Valentine, understanding a lot about the uh, ancient Egypt and our, our the first human existence on the planet and how they navigated with um, understanding like the pineal gland and meditation and the chakra systems and all of this information that was incredibly foreign to me at the time. And, and then I started to move into Tai Chi, which really helped to accelerate my journey into feeling. Mm-hmm. I remember talking to someone about this recently, like I'm starting to be so much more angry now. Like I'm just getting, like I, last week I was so angry and it literally culminated with me scratching the fuck out of my car two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> but that just happens. But I, I was really angry and I told my friend, like, I actually hadn't felt the sensation of anger until I started my Tai Chi journey because I suppressed so much of my emotions just to appear and appeal to people around me, appear nice and appeal, you know, good and kind. And but really, those weren't real emotions. Those it was just like, you know, faking it till I make it. And I grew up in the South, too, you know, as a woman in the South, like, should be seen and not heard and you should be nice and 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 polite that's those are the words and um and my politeness was you know it was like to the death of me you know I really had no ex- and, and ability to express and emote and just to get to your question so as I was developing all these skills and developing all these um th- this these spiritual tools my toolkit was developing I realized that a lot of my peers likely are going through the same shit I'm going through and they don't have the tools or even the knowingness, the awareness that there is something out here that could support this very chaotic journey that we're all on to making money or being successful or being a good parent or whatever it may be. And for me, the answer truly was in healing. Like all all my dreams could be fulfilled if I could just heal myself and grow and connect to my soul and then that's essentially how the metaphysical business you know concept was even developed and then now it's evolved into the meta business world and and we can get into that more later wow well first I just want to say thank you for your vulnerability and sharing your journey you know I think it's so easy to look at people or to make assumptions or to to see success or just like you know, oh, you know, well, I have this and they don't have that. And it's like, okay, this is, it's these type of stories where we are reminded that one vulnerability is power. Yes. And and two, that we are all walking similar paths, maybe with different stories, but we're all growing and evolving. And I think having these vulnerable conversations helps to empower people to know that they're not the only one going through something or have gone through something and that there are alternatives. So I just want to acknowledge that first and foremost. Thank you. Absolutely. And second, you know, I think it's also another great reminder that you can go through extreme challenges, deep trauma, and also still shine brightly, right? Mm -hmm. Because in these types of situations, it can feel easier to just go down that same path, Uh right? So what would you say was one of your driving factors for not continuing down that path or not allowing those traumas to dictate who you are as a person? Yeah. You know, as I was going through a lot of the things, particularly like in the most recent years, like I said, it was hard for me to even feel, you know, like I felt the pain, but it wasn't quite, you know, gripping enough where I could go that far. You know, I was still numb numb enough where I was just like, okay, this is just my life. I still got to, you know, do what I have to do. And I I feel like there was, there is still that young girl blazing my own trail, 
you know, Aaron, you're going to, you're going to change the world type of um, little voice that always lives in me that disallows me from really pulling the trigger, like literally, you know what I'm saying? So there is still this aspect of me that is, all of this is, is for your good. All of this is serving your something, something greater. So just hold on, hold on. But it's like holding on for years, like I'm holding on for years, you know? And, and it's just, it's in that perseverance that really the, the, iron, the iron gets sharpened, like the alchemy happens. Like, and this is really what the alchemist is. Once you start to really dive into the metaphysical aspect of it, that's why the metaphysics resonated so deeply with me because it seems so magical and it seems so unworldly. And what I was experiencing did not feel of this world. Like it felt too, it felt too great to be from this world. So I feel like that's also what attracted me to the metaphysical aspect of it because you think you look at it at a at the masters, you look at a Jesus. And like, who would have thought that someone who incarnated as a fully divine being, like literally an angel, human angel, could be stabbed in the guts and hung on a cross? You know what I'm saying? Like, so there there still was this element of honoring, you know, the religious path that I was um, kind of indoctrinated in and the other masters who I met in along the journey, the Buddhas and et cetera. And in other enlightened in beings and the torture that they had to go through in order to alchemize the energy mm-hmm. to really ascend into a master like being. And so, you know, as selfish as it may sound to people, I saw myself in this light and I saw I, I was thinking like, wow, if I'm going to be a great master, if I'm really going to support and serve humanity, then I, too, need to have my catalytic experiences that really test is is this is this chick even is she even worth it you know what I'm saying and that's really how I can look at it now too like God wow you really trust me with a lot like I I really would not have even put this on myself yet it's really in that that honoring and that love for God that that got me through because at that time, I really saw God as, as a more of an external being and, you know, like, you know, like scolding me or, or, or molding me or, or all these things. And so I really was developed this very personal relationship with God that now has really, you know, turned to me, you know, and, and getting me through all of these challenges and the affirmations and speaking over myself, changing my mindset about things. Like I really started that in around 2018 and I still listen to the same if not more affirmations today you know that all of these you know my emotional addictions are are really are what's creating this pain and this this sense of of trauma if you will versus seeing it as a lesson right and and I really had to say say these things to myself for years before I could actually internalize and believe okay this is a lesson you know this is a $50,000 $50,000 less than a $5,000. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever it is to keep myself from going down that path of, of more destruction, of more hate, of more judgment, because essentially those are the energies and the emotions that I'm trying to clear so that I can really ascend and, and not have to be caught in the, in these lessons, if you will. Yeah. The, those financial lessons, those ones stick, don't they? <laughs> it's it's the emotional and the financial ones that whew, they, they really, you feel that thorn for a little while. You know, yeah. I, I love how you explained that. And I've honestly never heard anyone explain it like that before, how mm. even these light beings had to go through these defining moments, these challenges where mm. they were shaped and molded, um, to, to essentially be who they are, you know, to this greatness is not without sacrifice. And, and it's, it's the people like you and I, and I know so many people that are listening today that feel this higher calling for more, Mm -hmm. right. That they're, Oh, I literally just got chills everywhere. Like (laughs) there, there is more than the routine. 
mm-hmm. than the Instagram feed, than the bullshit that somebody did on the road in front of you, right? Like those are all our physical experiences here on this earth, but you're, it's like your soul knows that there's more. Yeah, There's an expansion. There is a calling. It's like, I can't quite put my finger on it, but there's just a knowing. Mm-hmm. And when it comes down to that, it's, am I willing to follow the breadcrumbs to find out what that is all about? Yes. And it feels like that is the journey that you have been on and continue to be on. And that's what brought us together. A hundred percent. And it's funny that I got chills when you said that, because I remember when I started my sort of spiritual path, kind of moving away from the church, I did this 21 day meditation challenge with Oprah and Deepak Chopra. I'll never forget this. Love it. <laughs> and I remember Deepak um, inviting listeners to imagine themselves walking down a path and moving the leaves. And I don't know if you said that exactly, but I remember seeing that as I did the meditation and literally moving the leaves. And I remember, I think at that time I was like hacking them with like a machete <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> but now as I think about it, just like moving the leaves gently through a jungle to carve your own path. Yes. And when I'm telling you listeners and viewers, like it looks and feels that way to get to that top of that mountain, like you're literally moving it leaf by leaf to create that path for yourself. And that is completely analogous, like um, I would say opposite of what we experience, like to your point in the Instagram, you know, instant gratification world where people want fast money and fast fame now. And especially for our generation, that's why I call myself the metaphysics millennial because there couldn't have been anyone more programmed into that mindset than me. You know, and I really had to undo a lot of that programming because I wanted everything now. And that was even how we were conditioned in business. I went to Harvard Business School, Harvard Kennedy School of Government. It was always at that time, like, fail fast, learn quick. You know what I'm saying? Iterate, you know, scale. It's all about just like everything (laughs) fast. And that's actually the opposite of how universe unfolds. Like when you think about creation and, and just nature, everything moves slow as fuck. You know what I'm saying? But not only is it slow, but it turns out to be so grand and everlasting when it moves at that pace. And that is essentially the energy that I've been moving more into now and understanding that what I had been going through, it felt so excruciating for so long because that is essentially the pace at which nature moves, at which God moves, at which this life works truly. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I know that I know that everyone that listens loves loves a little bit of the how and the steps behind. So mm-hmm. let's transition into talk to me about what metaphysics is, because I yes. find it fascinating. I was digging into it on your website. Yes. Um, help help me and the listeners know what that what is this concept all about? Yeah, sure. So metaphysics, um, very simply is a compound word meta, as many of us have become more familiar with because of Facebook, um, is a Greek word and it denotes to go above or beyond to go some to go higher. And physics represents the physical plane, the three dimensional world. So when you put those two words together, metaphysics, it invites us to go above or beyond this physical plane body, this physical plane, tapping into the multidimensionality of our universe and of our own beings. Because at the end of the day, we are three parts. We are our physical body. Yes, we have an emotional body and we have a spiritual body, our soul. And our soul is what gives us life. Like we couldn't even sit here without the soul. And of course, our emotions drive a lot of our thinking, our actions, et cetera. But most of us have been conditioned around this physical body which is only a third of ourselves. So in, in, in hindsight, we've really been ignoring 66.6 of ourselves for most of our lives. And so when we're tapping into the metaphysical aspect of us, it's really just our own energy. It's our, our solar plexus, our heart chakras, our, our soul, or our, the seat of our soul, and it enlivens us. It's, it's magnetic. It's our field, essentially. And it's essentially what drives us. So when we're thinking about our metaphysical journey, we're thinking about our energy and how is our energy 
Is our energy low? Is our energy high? Is it angry? Our emotional, because our, our emotions are also tied to our energy. When our emotions are angry or shameful or judgmental, that means our energy is low. So when we want to get our energy higher, we do things that bring us more joy, whether that's going for a walk outside or talking to a, a, a dear friend who you whom you love, that literally raises your energy, your frequency. And that's the metaphysical aspect of us that gives us more energy in our physical body to do more, to be more, to be more creative. So this is why the metaphysics is super important because it is such a huge majority part of our beingness. And when we're not tapped into that, not that invisible aspect of ourselves, then there's really no way we can really actualize the fullest potential of the part of us that is visible. Mm, absolutely. You know, a conversation that, that's popping up right now that I have often with women, particularly is when I ask them, what do you want? And it's like a deer in headlights. Yeah. Right? Be- and, and to your point, you know, it's not a fault of theirs, right? It's conditioning. It's all this crap around us. And it's because there's two thirds of us that have not been tapped into per- for probably a very long time. Yeah. Right. So how do you start to tap into, you know, if someone's new to this or maybe hasn't done it in a while, how do you start to tap into your energy? Mm, that's a very good question. And I don't know how many people are going to like this answer, but it is what it is, is meditation. And the meditation for beginners should start with silence. You know, over time it evolves and it looks different and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But in the beginning, it's really important to sit with yourself in silence. And for those who are beginners, like for me, like I I had the Deepak Chopra, you know, 21 day challenge. You know, I think that's a beautiful place to start with with, with a guided meditation, whether it's via Calm app or Insight Timer or even YouTube, just, you know, YouTube 10 minute uh, guided meditation and start to try on different ones that resonate with you because it's in the silence where we start to be able to listen. And that's something that I feel like a lot of people have not had the time to do is listen to themselves or be still or tune in with themselves. But that's essentially where it starts to really get into the energy of yourself. Um, A lot of us have been conditioned and taught how to pray, which is also a beautiful practice. I believe that prayer is like a conversation, like I'm talking and then meditation is listening. It's receiving. Mm. So I believe that the best way to start tapping into um, your energy body, your your true self, your soul is to be still and to listen. Yes, that stillness. I like to call it the power of the pause, right? Yes. Where, where you're just, where you're giving yourself a second mm-hmm. to think, to feel more than think, to feel, to process, to tap into, right? Because we make these rash decisions we fall into things that we feel like we should do. We, you know, we get caught in the motions or the routine. And before you know it, it's been six years and you're wondering what the hell's going on in life. Yeah. Right. So it's the stillness. It's like, are you willing to get temporarily uncomfortable to sit still for 10 minutes Mm -hmm. and to feel what you need to feel? Yes. You know, it's, it's the running away from the feelings. It's not wanting the process that I find that a lot of people run into as well. Is that true for you? Did I just cut this where the answer was? I most certainly did, but no worries. It's coming up soon. But first, this is your mid episode reminder that if you are loving the gutsy podcast, if you're finding value in this, if it's making an impact in your life or in your business, one of the most beneficial and greatly appreciated ways for you to help us continue and to grow the show is to one, leave a review. Uh, Apple Podcasts has a great feature. You just scroll down, leave a review. It helps other viewers know what to expect from the show and also to share it on your social media platforms, in a text message to a friend, or perhaps in your community or newsletter. Let other people know what you're gaining from the Gutsy Podcast and why they should be a subscriber as well. I legit read every single testimonial review and comment that you tag me in. And I would be so appreciative if you could take a moment today to do one, two, or maybe hell, all three of those things. And be sure you hit the subscribe button so that you get notified every time a new episode airs. 
All right, Aaron has a beautiful answer for you. So let's get into the second half of today's episode. Well, I feel like running away. Absolutely. It was true for me personally. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so for other people, yes, it can be that. And I also can be look different, but the running away from my emotions was how I survived. Mm -hmm. Um, Not not being able to feel, like I said, the numbing, the drinking, the partying, the, you know, the hooking up, anything to distract me from, from myself was what I indulged you know, to the, to the max. Yes. And, and so I feel like by being still, I think a lot of times beginners, first thing they say is, Oh, I can't quiet my thoughts. I have so many thoughts. Trust me, you're going to continue to have a lot of thoughts, but as time evolves, you're going to learn how to decipher which thoughts are my thoughts or which thoughts are coming from my parents or my grandparents or society or, you know, my friend, like, you know, you start to really see these thoughts for what they are, as opposed to um, just thoughts, you know what I'm saying? And that's part of the journey. And then as you evolve more, the thoughts start to soften and get quieter. And eventually it's, you know, they're there, but you're, you're with yourself, you know, and, and that's really how the journey goes and, and, and getting past essentially that trauma of not wanting to be with yourself is, is essentially why people don't want to sit with those thoughts and why they prefer to run because of, of the feelings that, that can come, can arise with those thoughts. And I encourage people to sit with those feelings because it is in the very sitting with them in which you're transmuting them, you're alchemizing them, you're shifting them, but you have to be able to sit in them before they can move. Um, that's, and that's essentially the work is, is not avoiding the pain, not avoiding the thoughts, but sitting in it comfortably and knowing and trusting that in time it will, it will, um, it will no longer serve you and it won't have any space in your field anymore. So it'll go away. Those feelings will go away. Yeah. And they lose their intensity right? (laughs) When, when we ignore them or, or push them, you know, under the rug or pretend like they're not there their intensity only magnifies right yeah. because yeah. they're like hey i i don't actually want to be here i want to move but you're not letting me so i'm going to get yeah. your attention yes <laughs> but when you sit with it and feel it and process it and and allow it to move the intensity goes from 100 to 20 right and then it becomes easier to manage and easier to to pivot i think it's also important to acknowledge that like you know, especially with trauma and things that big things that happen, it's not like they a hundred percent just go away. Right. But Mm -hmm. now you're better equipped to process them and their intensity isn't as high as what they once were. And that was the part that I was going to also just build on with you because what happens is you start to be met with different challenges that trigger the same emotions. Yep. That's what happens along the evolutionary journey is as you it's, it's, it's called refinement actually. And so as you start to, okay, you get from a hundred to 20, but then like, how do you get from 20 to zero? Well, whew, that's the refinement. So you get more complex challenges, more complex, you know, um, situations that you're having to deal with even more financial, you know, problems, you know what I'm saying? Like, because that's the refining of the energy. It's like, okay, I used to have like a scarcity mindset. So that, so I had a lot of fear around spending money. So then that gets you to to 20. And then now you're having to make even bigger investments or take even bigger risks. And that's the refining that gets you down from the 20 to zero. So in time, you're just like, so aligned that you know that every dollar you're spending is going to impact you and benefit you in the most abundant and beautiful ways. Oh. And that's essentially how it works. Absolutely. It yeah. absolutely that gosh, that's ringing very true <laughs> <laughs> because that shit does not just go away. Right. It's yeah. it shows up in a different costume. Yes. And that shit can come at you real hard and real fast. Yes. And, <laughs> and that's you're like what's beautiful about life is because you you said the costume when it reminds me of how people say like life is theater. Yes. Yes. But man, when you 
you know, so much of the practice that you're talking about is building a stronger foundation. Mm -hmm. So it's like when those moments come, right. When we're talking about the 20 to the zero, Mm -hmm. we're more grounded in it, Mm -hmm. right. We're, we're more aligned with ourselves. The noise in our mind isn't as loud, right. It's a, it's the same, but different because, Mm -hmm. because you're different. Yeah. Oh, I just felt that. (laughs) I just felt that you are different. You are. And when I say different, I don't mean a a different person. I mean that you are different than the perfected person that the world has expected you to be. Mm -hmm. You're you're different because you are yourself now. Mm -hmm. And that's where your fucking power is, my friend. Yes, period. Oh, see, I I can get real wound up about this stuff. So one of the things that you talk about on on your site and in your content as well is this dis-ease. Mm-hmm. And I thought I like the play on word and how that's showing up, you know, in life, but also in business. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So disease, we're all familiar with that word, you know, and I come from a, interestingly enough, my, my dad's a medical doctor. My mom's a dentist. My family's pharmacists and nurses. And I come from a very medical family. And when we think about these medical terms, we don't understand that a lot of their roots start obviously in the metaphysical and the emotional body and the soul body even. And when we are going through this soul journey or this soul life, we want to be at peace. We want to be in love. We want to be in joy. And at the end of the day, we want to be at ease. And when we're at ease, that's when everything flows. And that is what people call the flow state. You know, they're in the zone for athletes or whatever it is. That is how, as human beings, we should be existing. Yet the prison matrix, dominant matrix that we exist in disallows this ease existence by creating this disease state, essentially. And so that's why, you know, you have so many people at at younger and younger ages experiencing all kinds of disease, whether it's ADHD or ADD or autism or cancer or blah, 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 blah. You know, it's a, it's a disease, it's a disease to the matrix that we live in. And so that's why I have that play on words in terms of the dis-ease, because when we're not at ease then it's not going to flow, the energy is not going to flow, we're not going to be in our perfected state. But the beautiful thing about this world and about this body and about this life is that everything can be restored to its fullest. Everything, anything with the right intention, with the right practice and with the right willingness, then everything, the righteousness, everything can be restored. And that's what Jesus taught too as well. And obviously that's how he was able to reincarnate and come back in the flesh after being killed and murdered because he had, he was able to alchemize the energy in a way where it literally, his light body was able to heal his dead deceased body. And he was also able to raise Lazarus from the dead. So it happened many times in the Bible where this, um, it's actually an ancient ritual where you're able to die and come back to life. And some yogis practice this as well. So this is actually some real shit. And so, um, so essentially the disease state is, um, is when we're at ease and particularly in business, <laughs> getting back to the, the question, we are in a diseased <laughs> corporate environment, period. You know, a lot of things that I talk about in, in the business world are, are the burnout. A lot of people are experiencing burnout. Myself, personally, as an entrepreneur, for a lot of you entrepreneurs out there, I called myself a corporate dropout because I was so cool and I was going to start my business not having healed the very things that I thought that I was running from in my corporate existence to then enslave myself as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So working (laughs) from 7 a.m. to 2 a.m., I wasn't really eating. I was miserable. I'm like so focused around the wrong things. I could barely um, hire people because I didn't want to not have control over everything in my business. Like it was like, okay, girl, you wanted to be an entrepreneur to have the freedom and to be, you know, happier. But in reality, you've, you become your, your master, you know what I mean? You've enslaved yourself. And, and so I feel like so much of that culture is embedded in business where we work hard, we go harder to get higher outcomes. When in reality, that's, you know, a a diseased existence. And beyond that, I mean, in the past couple of years, now that we've awakened more to social and societal issues, 
we are dealing with all these differences culturally, socially, politically in a work environment that are completely hidden and buried and and people aren't even allowed to express themselves because of fear of retribution, of being canceled, of being, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like there's really no, <laughs> especially for white men, like I feel, you know, I feel real bad for white men out here. That's actually who my target audience is because it's like a lot of, of hate and blame is going towards one group and that's a, a diseased existence. That's a victim mindset when we're blaming someone, the man, for our issues. Like, like this is I I created this reality. If you know, when you start to take into the metaphysical aspects of the a more eased existence, is I'm re- accountable and responsible for myself and everything that, and most everything that happens to me. So there is no blaming of anyone here. And then of course, post pandemic everyone's working from home like you and I were in our homes and and we don't we aren't really surrounded by people so I luckily have a family I live in a community so I have a lot of people who I can be around but a lot of people are lonely as fuck and that is essentially part of the disease existence as well in business so we have you know the burnout we have all of these cultural differences that are so unresolved if anything they're very aggravated right today and then we have this loneliness crisis so to me, these are the the symptoms, if you will, of a of a larger issue of a diseased corporate environment across the globe. Like this is a global issue, and so um, a lot of the work that I that I'm getting into in terms of the metaphysics and the spirituality and the mindfulness and the wellness are are, are prescriptions to get to keep go along that line of the medical you know um, lexicon. Our, 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 our healing, you know, tools to really get at and, um, and mitigate sort of these, these disease symptoms in business. Absolutely. Look, when you said that, you know, leaving the corporate world, going into your own business and then like basically building your own imprisonment, <laughs> <laughs> wholly relatable, right? I can, <laughs> gosh, I've done that probably more times than I care to even count. You know, I've undone that more times than I care to count, Mm -hmm. but it's like the same thing keeps presenting itself until you get to the root of it, heal it and shift it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like there's something I didn't grab. There's something we didn't grab. There's something that wants our attention. There's something that needs to be moved and healed. So when you said that, I was like, Oh, I know that a lot of people listening are like, damn it. (laughs) (laughs) Damn it. You know, because we, it's like a, I almost feel like it's the sense of like needing to prove something or to, to chase something or, you know, to build something, but in spite of something, and and I'm not saying that's true for everyone, but I just feel like as entrepreneurs, I know us pretty well. Yeah. And there's always something that more often than not, there's something that was displeasing in our life or in our career. Mm -hmm. We're like, we're going to fix that and do it better. Yeah. That's that's the beauty of the spirit of the entrepreneur because we can create, but when you become an entrepreneur, that doesn't mean your personal shit goes away. My friend. (laughs) Oh, it gets amplified. It's own view. Oh, it's like public view. It's like someone took out a digital billboard in times square and invited everybody in the country to come look at it. Right. Like it, it goes, it's, it gets louder. It gets more dominant. Um, and until you work with it, it will continue to show up in your business. Yes. And this is why people, you know, like to point fingers and talk about people like Elon Musk or all these kind of other big billionaire type or successful entrepreneurs. And, you know, they're just living their life out loud. Like, you know, I would love one day to be able to work with Elon Musk and some of these other guys that are, are willing to go along, you know, a more righteous path, you know, because they are having to do all of this in real time in front of everyone. And just because they have a lot more notoriety and so-called, you know, resources and money, then it makes it look different, but no, they're going through the same shit we're going through. Actually the whole planet, it's almost like this great equalizing moment that we're in right now. Like you might have more money than me, but at the same time, we're all suffering the same. Yeah. We're all suffering the same. And until we can all come into a very intentional healing, then the money is actually going to do us a disservice. 
um, it's actually going to have diminishing returns over time. Mm. Oh, say that again. Mm -hmm. Money is going to have diminishing returns over time if we do not come into healing. That's incredible. That is incredible. I mean, if that doesn't pierce you, I don't know what does. <laughs> right? Look at the market. It's reflected in our market. There's been yeah. no growth, a lot of stagnation, a lot of inflation. And it's a reflective of our energy. You know, we have to understand that our energy, I mean, it, our vibration precedes the manifestation. And so if our vibration is fearful, anxious, warlike, then we're going to get a manifestation of that in all forms. Yes. How do you feel about, um, cause I know some people are like, oh, if I I'm worried now. What if I'm thinking bad thoughts? Am I going to call bad things into my life? Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I know this law of attraction is very, um, you know, more prevalent now for folks. And I mean, you should just be congratulating yourself that you're aware that you're having these negative thoughts. That's very true. <laughs> very true. That's, well, that's half of it, right? Yeah. You, you can't shift what you're not aware of. Period. So the fact that you lived up until now having these thoughts and you didn't even know it, you should have been, that's, that's way more dangerous than where you're at now. And so what you've been calling forth, yeah, has been probably on the more negative, if you will, disagreeable side because you were not aware of those thoughts. And now that you're aware of them, okay, you're like, okay, I'm calling forth probably even more unfavorable things. And this goes back to the original conversation we were having around our perspective of the things happening in our lives as, are they really unfavorable? Are they really just some hard ass lessons that my stubborn ass needed to learn? <laughs> <laughs> And that is me. Like I needed to wake the fuck up. I was so, <laughs> I was so locked into this matrix. Like I loved, I drank all the Kool-Aid. I thought everything that was, I ex that existed was real. And a lot of times we need to be, you know what I'm saying? Like kicked in the ass to wake up and and realize, wow, I had I could have a lot more control over how I show up, over what I think, over how how I react, what I do. But to your point, half the battle, I would say 90% of the battle is the awareness. Yeah. We have to actually know that we can shift something. And if we don't know that, then we just have to continue to be patient with ourselves. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. So one of my final questions today is, and I loved how you, you talked about this, the soul of your organization. <laughs> we've, talked, we've talked a lot about our, ourselves as persons, but I know we have tons of entrepreneurs that listens as well. Mm -hmm. How, how does, how is metaphysics tapping into the business itself? And how do you look into the soul of your organization? Cause I just find that really yummy. Yes. I love that you brought that up because an organization, just like any ecosystem is made up of its parts. It's made up of the individuals. And oftentimes a lot of these organizations, especially the larger ones are driven by one like ego maniac, <laughs> <laughs> like one person. Yet the organization is um, tens of thousands of people. And when we're not thinking about the people, the individuals, the human beings, then we are completely neglecting the soul of the organization and it becomes soulless. And that's how it can turn into all of these, you know, nefarious things. So um, when we talk about the soul of the organization, it's really about tapping into the individuals, the people that comprise the organization and more tactically, the values of the organization, the vision of the organization, the mission of the organization. And I know this may sound mundane to some people, yet this is the actual practice that I support a lot of folks in, in really getting to the core of who the fuck you are as an organization, as a company. Why would people want to buy from you? Why would people want to continue to work with you, especially over an extended period of time? Right. You have to know who you are and our values are uncompromisable. They are, they represent who we are and they also signal, you know, to our, our other compad compadres out there, you know, Hey, if you're aligned with these, come fuck with us, you know? Right. 
And this goes back to how we just started in the beginning with your soul family. Like we can have soul organizations like, and I don't really look like to look at business anymore, like as a competitive landscape, like there is so much pie out here to eat. Like this is an infinitely abundant world. And this is also another shift that has to happen in business is that we've all been taught that there's only so much shares and that we have to take from that little pie. But if we're starting to look at each other as, as collaborators, co-creators, very similar to how we work together as podcasters and podcast swapping and how we can learn from each other, then that really starts to, to amplify the souls of business, you know, and how we can really impact the world. And, and in my view, my vision for the meta business world is to inspire, train, and, and um, teach 700 enlightened business leaders around the globe in the next 10 years, because I believe that in business, as the leadership, we have the ability to touch everyone in our organization, their families, their our, our customers, and also according to Dr. David Hawkins in the Map of Consciousness, for every enlightened being, they can touch energetically and impact and raise the consciousness of 1 million people. Wow. So if you look at the next 10 years, 700 enlightened business leaders that's at minimum 700 million people that we're impacting the consciousness of, lifting the consciousness of, and everyone consumes. If we're gonna be in a consumeristic culture, if we've already created this behavioral pattern, how can we then serve it with goodness, with righteousness, with justness? And so that's really the view and the, the vision for the meta business world. Yeah, girl, you're gonna do that and in, in even more. I know yes. it, I feel yes. it, I feel it. Yes. You know, it's like, that's the juiciness, right? That's mm -hmm. the excitement. Because as we all have our own energy fields, we all have our own auras. Mm -hmm. So do our businesses. Yes. Right. Your yes. business has an energy field. Your business has an aura. Mm -hmm. And so just to, to kind of like pull all of these pieces together today, like if we're talking about going against ourselves and not honoring our energy and not healing ourselves, and then that's going into our energy where it's being amplified into our business. Mm -hmm. think about how all of that just starts to really radiate, but not in a great way, right? Mm -hmm. Or not in a favorable way that's that's attracting what it is that you want. Whereas if we honor ourselves, we sit, right? We feel our shit. <laughs> we walk the path. We move the leaves out of the way. Yeah. And we heal that part of ourselves. Then you get to take that new renewed energy into the business. My God, like- the the amplification that happens from that the goodness that happens from that the positivity the change that you can have in people's lives it's fucking limitless limitless <laughs> and this is why i believe also that that everyone can be a billionaire like i really believe that we all have the potential when we clear the shit when we move through the past the trauma and we really start to see each other as the divine human beings that we incarnated as and we all have the ability to make a lot of money, enjoy our lives, be happy, be joyful, and be at ease. Yes, yes, and yes. Mm -hmm. And thank you for doing this work, my friend. Mm -hmm. It's it's people like you, it's people like me, it's people like so many others that are listening, that we, the world is more than ready for us. Yeah. Right? And, get ready. and, and needs us maybe now more than ever. Be ready. <laughs> That's what so, we, yeah. To round us out, I want to make sure that everyone knows where to find your magical human self. So <laughs> tell, us, tell us where we can connect with you and if there's any offers that you'd like to share. Sure. Um, so I'm on Instagram, threads, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn at I am Aaron Patton, also YouTube. Um, I have my podcast and Meta Business Millennial podcast also on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And I'd love for you to um, book a discovery call with me at the metabusiness.world. That's my website, the metabusiness.world. And we can start to discuss how I can support you along your efforts, um, whether for your business or for your startup. And um, we can learn more and together about how we can uh, shift this, this trajectory, this new earth paradigm. Amazing. We'll make sure to have all those links in the show notes. And Aaron, I must know, what does the word gutsy mean to you? Gutsy. Uh, well, for me, um, it taps, I'm going to have to take my metaphysical approach with this, but our guts represent our sacral chakra. 
And um, our sacral energy is our creative energy, um, our creator energy. And so when we are gutsy, we are in our creator mode, we are visioning, we are imagining, and we are building something beautiful and, and bold. Absolutely. Gosh, you are a shining star. I can't wait to continue to watch you do the magic that you are doing um, <laughs> and stay connected. So thank you for sharing your wisdom and your spirit and your energy with us today. Thank you so much, Laura Ora, for having me. It's been such a pleasure and honor and privilege to be here and share my light with all of your listeners and viewers. And I just look forward for the opportunity to connect with you again soon. Absolutely. This Thursday's Power Back episode is full of joy, play, and adventure. It is about reconnecting with your inner child. Look, we grow up, we get responsibilities, we're on a path, we're goal-oriented, we've got stuff going on, everybody needs something from us. And it's so easy to forget who you were as a child, the spirit that lives inside of you, and how that integration of your inner child with your present day self, not only feels better, but helps you to call in the things that you want that much easier. If you're feeling like the spark is gone and you need something to reconnect and reignite yourself, Power Back 177, reconnect with your inner child is gonna be for you. In the meantime, come say hello. I love to interact with you on social media. You can find me on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram using at that Laura Aura. And as always, until I see you next time, stay gutsy.